Hello, my name is Ralph. I am an addiction recovery coach. I'm also the host of this show, Take Your Life Back Today Show. As an addiction recovery coach, I want to share this about substance abuse. And let me be crystal clear because I want to leave an everlasting impact upon you all. Imagine, just imagine, being buried alive, but you know you're not dead. You push on that lid, and the enormous weight that's upon that lid prevents you from opening the coffin. But you also think about banging on the coffin lid. So maybe you can unsettle the dirt that's upon that, and maybe someone on top, just maybe, will start digging their way down to you. This is what it's like to find yourself at the lowest point of alcohol and drug addiction. You know you need help. You know you can't do it on your own, but you don't know where to turn to help. In reality, there are people who can help you probably standing right nearby up there. You just don't realize that. You just think you're going to die. Usually, though, people don't think about death when they're habitually using and abusing drugs and alcohol. In order to feed an addiction, you have to be good at repressing the fear of death. I often ask you, my audience, did it ever occur to you that maybe, just maybe, every time you use alcohol, every time you use drugs, and you abuse either one, that you might overdose? With this, I want to leave you with one other thought. Don't be that person in the coffin, laying there, alive, banging on the lid, hoping that someone might hear you. You can do something about it, because you can take the first step today by contacting an addiction recovery coach, a life coach, a friend, a loved one, and reaching out to them and saying, I need help. I have a problem. I have alcoholism. I have drug addiction. There is no shame in admitting that. What would be shameful is if you don't admit it and you don't talk about it to people because if you hide it, it will kill you. Reach out to me at 844-405-HELP and I will help you take your life back before your life is gone. People like myself and Larry Geis from the Geis Academy at 516-458-2741. Larry Geis is an addiction recovery coach, a life coach. He will help you from your addiction to your recovery, hand in hand, step by step. Him, like myself, we always tell our clients, yesterday's gone, and it doesn't matter where you're coming from. What matters is, is where you are right now and where we're planning on taking you or where you're planning on going. That is what matters, and people like Larry Geis from the Geis Academy, you can Google him at www.odysseyconsultant.org. People like him and I are crutches for you to lean on, but you have to be able to make that first move. You have to be able to reach out. Don't be that person laying in the coffin alive, banging on a lid, hoping that someone on top might hear you. You have the opportunity that many people didn't have, and that is to reach out for help right now, today. Call Larry at 516 458 2741 and let Larry Geis and or myself help you take your life back. Folks, I want you to be able to see each and every show nice and clear. So why not promote GlobalEyeglasses.com because they are focused on saving you money and I want you to be able to focus on seeing my videos. Go to www.globaleyeglasses.com and view over 1,200 frames of metal, plastic, full frame, half frames, no frames at all. Look at all the different types of lenses. They have, they have no line bifocals, otherwise known as progressives. They have line bifocals. They have single vision, whether it's distant or reading. They have uh, thinner lenses, 1.60 thickness, 1.67 thickness, 1.74 thickness. They have coatings like scratch coating, anti-reflecting coating, and UV coating, all available at globaleyeglasses.com. Here's the perk. I have over 30 years experience in the optometry field, and that's why I promote Global Eyeglasses, because they can save you about 70% of what you would call, uh, pay for in your freestanding brick-and-mortar local optical shop. So why not? Go to www.globaleyeglasses.com, where when you order them, the only time you have to leave to get them is to go to your mailbox to take them out and put them right on and continue watching my videos. www.globaleyeglasses.com. Let them focus on saving you money. Today I want to talk about how to choose gratitude over stress for this holiday season. With Thanksgiving upon us, just about, and Christmas showing up, it seems as if the holiday season, the time-honored mix of bag uh, pleasure and pain starts early and earlier each year, bringing 
with it the flood of emotional baggage earlier, uh, earlier and earlier each year. If you harbor memories of Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, or Kwanzaa, or other holiday celebrations filled with disappointments and dread, you, my friend, are not alone. If you experience excessive anxiety and for foreboding at the first sight of holiday paraphernalia in a department store, consider relaxing your expectation, shifting your mindset. These changes help make it possible to survive and even thrive during the stress-filled weeks from late November until early January. Look at some of these or listen to some of these. Letting go of your expectations to release the grip of holiday stress, start entertaining uh, the notion that most of life's disappointments wouldn't be nearly as devastating if we kept our expectations more in line with reality. Think back to a time when something you were reluctant to do turned out to be not so terrible after all. That delicious moment when you thought to yourself, that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. The revelation can bring a huge sigh of relief and remind us to hold expectations in check. Anytime we assume the worst, we set ourselves up to be miserable, even if in reality it isn't all that bad. Similarly, it can help to be realistic about your chances for a holiday that's filled with nothing but serenity and happiness. Hint, the odds are pretty low. Have you already forgotten about your last year's holiday dinner where everything wasn't you had hoped it to be? Have you vowed that this year things are going to be different? Have you uh, vowed that things will be different during your next, this year's holiday dinner? Of course, this wishful thinking assumes that you won't be exhausted from cooking, cleaning, shopping, wrapping, and attending all holiday preparations. Your holiday may not be everything you want it to be, but lower your expectations and it will be more of what you want it to be, my friend. Shifting your mindset. Now that, not yet you've let go of your expectations, or at least lowered them, it's time to look at this holiday season through different lens. What better way to look through different lens than going to globaleyeglasses.com? <laughs> Pure, unadulterated gratitude. While it might take some time and effort to cultivate gratitude when stress is abound, it's all worth it at the end of the day. Studies have shown that gratitude can reduce debt, stress and anxiety, improve intimate relationships, and even promote physical good health. A, a gratitude-filled approach in life has the potential to enhance your general well-being both this holiday season and all year round. So what are the small things to be grateful for? Well, for starters, how about any or all of the following? Please write some of these down. Number one, for family, even the certain relatives that drive you absolutely wild with a desire to escape to another planet, be grateful for family because family is your blood. Family hopefully are there through good and bad. Number two, for the awareness that you are not responsible for the bad behavior of others, even if they are related to you by blood. Number three, for those friends who love and support you no matter what, through thick and thin, as the uh, Adesh says. For the abundance of food set before you, knowing that people are starving in every corner of the world, while your plate is often overflowing and sometimes wasteful. For the generosity of others who lead by example, whether by giving their time, money, or talent to lend a helping hand. For good health, possibly the most cherished gift of it all, because without health, there is no us. The one that can't be bought, wrapped, or even given away. God created you because you are an awesome person. God gave you good health, and it's up to you to take care of that health. Folks, your body is like a car. What you put in is what you get out. For the wisdom of parents, grandparents, both present and deceased. Be grateful that you even believe their mistakes wounded you in the ways, great or small, their intentions were in most instances well-meaning and who are today as a, uh, in, is a result of their guidance and those struggles. That's their teaching to you, their upbringing of you, is what made you today. 
for the knowledge that the complete turkey dinners are available for purchase at a supermarket should you suddenly uh, overcook yours or set it on fire. A little joke on the side. For the realization that something will uh, eventually go wrong, even under the best circumstances in life, and that's okay because if it does, look at the big t picture. Show gratitude for what you have. Look at the glasses half full, not half empty, and laugh it off. Brush it off your shoulder. And lastly, be grateful that this day, dinner or disaster will soon pass, and you can go back to your life in January, the most boring, uneventful month of the year. Each time you find yourself overwhelmed by stress, gently guide your focus back to one or all of the things that I'll go over again uh, that we just discussed. If it helps, write down your gratitudes on paper and display them prominently as a visual reminder of how you want this holiday season, whether it being Thanksgiving and or Christmas. The more you practice this simple habit, the more you will start to notice a shift in your thinking from a fearful anxiety to a calm of the present moment, wishing you a holiday season filled with gratitude no matter what. And I'm going to go over those again with you. But today's topic was pretty uh, a good one. How to choose gratitude over stress this holiday season. And the holiday season is upon us. Next week is Thanksgiving. And then we have Christmas and we have Hanukkah and Kwanzaa all showing up. But what you need to do is you need to set expectations in life. But not too high. Because when you set the bar high and you don't meet that bar, it brings you, your esteem, down it brings your stress up. So if you set the bar lower and exceed that, it brings everything up because then you are saying to yourself, wow, I did better than I thought. Shifting your mindset now that you've let go of those expectations and hopefully you've lowered those expectations, it's time to look at this holiday season through a different lens. Pure, unadulterate gratitude. While it may take some, some effort to cultivate gratitude when the stresses abound, it's all worth it. Studies have shown that gratitude can reduce stress and anxiety, improve intimate relationships, and promote good, healthy, or good physical health. A gratitude-filled approach in life has to be potential to sense, uh, enhance your general well-being both this holiday and all year round. Here are the things you should be grateful for, and, and some of them, uh, like the first one, uh, you know, we all have certain family members that just get under your skin, but you know what, folks, at the end of the day, they're your family, and believe me, one day when that family member doesn't sit at that table anymore because they passed on, no matter how bad they might have been with you or towards you, you'll miss them. Number one for family, even if certain relatives drive you absolutely wild with desire to escape to another planet, be grateful you still have them. Number two, for the awareness that you are not responsible for the bad behavior of others, maybe sitting at the table, even if they are related to you by blood, be thankful and show gratitude for them. For those friends who love and support you no matter what, through thick and thin, be thankful and show gratitude. For the abundance of food set before you, knowing that you people are starving in every corner of the world, and you are sitting there with an overflowing plate, possibly even throwing out some of that plate, be thankful and show gratitude. For the gen generosity of others who lead by example, whether by giving their time, money, or talent to lend a helping hand, be thankful and be grateful. For good health, Possibly the most cherished gift of all. The one that can't be bought, wrapped, or returned. Be grateful. Be thankful. For the wisdom of parents, grandparents, both present and deceased. Be grateful that they, uh, that even if you believe their mistakes wounded you in the ways great or small, their intentions were, in most instances, well-meaning and who you are today is a result of the guidance of those struggles. Be thankful. Show gratitude. For the knowledge that the complete turkey dinners are available to purchase in a supermarket should yours overcook or even burn down. Be thankful and be grateful. 
for the realization that something will eventually go wrong, even under the best circumstances, and, it, and that is okay if it does. Look at the big picture. The, that this day, dinner or disaster is here. You survived it, so be grateful and be thankful. And lastly, be grateful for this day that you're breathing, you're blinking, you're watching this show, you're able to be thankful and be grateful. Each time you find yourself overwhelmed by stress, gently guide your focus back to one or all of the things that we just covered and be and, and say, I am thankful, I am grateful because I even have half this list. If it helps, write down your gratitudes on a piece of paper. Display them prominently at a visual reminder of how you want to feel this holiday season. The more you practice this simple habit, the more you will start to notice the shift in your thinking from uh, fearful anxiety to calm and present moment. Wishing you a holiday season filled with gratitude no matter what. And always be thankful and be grateful. Folks, lead by example. Because if you lead by example and you show your children that everything in life has a positive side to it, that will teach your children to be thankful and grateful. Not everything in life is going to go easy. We're going to have ups and downs each and every day. But you're alive. Feel. Feel the pulse. Stretch those arms. You, my friend, are alive. Be grateful and be thankful. Right now, there are people somewhere out in this world, out here, that are taking their last breath and closing their eyes. But I'm sure they are grateful for a great life they probably had. Check your health. Know that you're breathing. Know that you're blinking. Know that you can walk, you can run. There are people all over this world, for an example, my sister who can't walk. She's paralyzed from her hips down. My other sister's mentally challenged. So if you understand what I'm saying and you see what I'm saying and you can actually get up and go to the store, be grateful and be thankful. With this, folks, I want to remind you that a sober today promises you, promises you a better tomorrow. Start with sobriety in the morning and continue it all day long. Go to bed sober, wake up sober and continue and eventually you'll be a couple of years living a sober life, feeling better. Your health is getting better. Your skin color is getting better. You look in your wallet, you see some money. You look at next to you in bed, you see your spouse, or your loved one. You look at your children and how they're looking at you in a different way with respect and love and passion and compassion. Never ever drink, smoke, use profanity, or physically abuse in front of your children. Physical abuse you should never do anyway. But if you need to smoke and drink and you have a trash talking mouth, do it away from your children because they follow your lead. You are their hero. You are their role model. So if they see you doing all those things, they're going to say, well, mom, dad, grandparent, or legal guardian, they're doing it so it must be okay because they are my role model. Start today with a brand new life, a brand new thinking, and a brand new way of doing things. And all it is is seeking help. Don't be that person like I discussed in the beginning, laying in a coffin, knowing you're not dead, banging on the lid, because nine out of ten times people won't hear you. You need to make the move on seeking help by speaking up. Remember, alcoholism and drug addiction are diseases. You didn't choose. Nobody chooses to overdose. Nobody chooses to get drunk, to repeatedly go through that with the vomiting and nausea. Nobody chooses. It is a disease like cancer or diabetes. And when people have diseases, they seek a doctor's help. So you need to treat your alcoholism, your drug addiction, like it would be a fatal disease. Because guess what, folks? Eventually, it might just kill you. It might be a fatal disease. 
call me at 844-405-HELP and let me help you take your life back and may God bless you.